Welcome to DIY is my happy place. I'm Amy and today we're going to be making fall gnomes, scarecrow gnomes. I don't know about you, but fall happens to be my favorite season of the year. I actually, I love all the seasons, but we've had such an crazy hot summer this year. So to finally have the weather starting to cool and the leaves starting to turn makes me so happy. And it gets me in the spirit of making a scarecrow gnome. So do you want to see how I made it? Let's have some fun. Let's get started on this scarecrow gnome. I decided that doing my scarecrow, scarecrow gnome, I was going to start with my hat, very similar to how I did with my witch's hat, and I'll just do a pointed top. And I've got this twine that I got from the Dollar Tree, and it's kind of, I'm combining my witch's hat and the uh, Amigos gnomes that my sister did, kind of combining those two ideas. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this rope and I'm going to separate the three sections so that I can wrap it around this hat. As you can see I have two glue guns because that's how I roll. Sometimes I want a big glob of glue and sometimes I want little fine glue. So I have them both going at the same time but I definitely would recommend having the little finger silicone finger tips to keep from burning your finger if you try to do this. And I picked those up from the Dollar Tree. Pretty much everything here I have picked up from the Dollar Tree. This uh, raffia I got from the Dollar Tree. In fact, what I'll do is I'll tell you if it's not from the Dollar Tree. So just assume it's from the Dollar Tree unless I otherwise tell you. Hopefully I'll remember that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just wrapping this around. I want it to look like a straw hat when we're completely done. always do the hats after I've made my gnome so that I can make my hat the size that it, so it'll fit the gnome but this time I'm doing it backwards I'm actually making the hat first and I'll size the gnome to the hat okay now I have these markers which are actually the furniture you know that you fix furniture furniture scratches and everything that are different colors of brown that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to use those to kind of help rough things up, you know, make the hat look a little bit more dingy like it's a scarecrow, it's outside. <laughs> okay, so with my gnomes, I usually always start with the athletic, men's athletic ankle socks. They come in black and white. I've seen on the Dollar Tree online that they actually come in gray, but I've never seen gray at my store. I cut the elastic off the top and I save that in case I need it for a belt. Now I have these balloon straws. They're, they come in two different sizes. They have a, one that's big around and one that's smaller like this. And I've actually picked up both sizes and today I'm going to use both sizes. But the big straws are the ones that I use to attach to the shoes. Now if you want to know how I made the shoes, that's a different video and I will put a link down below to show how to make gnome shoes with this particular style. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to get some cotton and we're going to push it up into this sock and we're going to put those straws all the way to the top so that it can hold the gnome from bending and tipping over. And this is the trick. You want those sticks to be going straight up and down from your gnome. It's going to go from the top of the head all the way to the shoe. And if those are straight up and down, then the gnome won't tip over. And these little attachments are the key to making this work. Now I like to try it out just to see if that's going to go how I want it before I glue it in. And once I see that yes it's stable, the sticks are straight in the middle of the foam 
and it will hold up my gnome, then I can start gluing. And this is when I use my big glue gun and I put a very generous amount of glue in and then set it aside and let that completely dry before we move on to the next thing. Okay, every once in a while I'll notice like, oh, there's a spot without glue. Let's make sure it all has glue. Now we'll get our Dollar Tree pantyhose and I'm gonna make my gnome nose. Now I use a lot of different things. I've used ping pong balls, the plastic golf balls, but this time I want it to be a little bit more quirky. So I'm actually using, they come in the flower department and they're these green foam balls. I don't know, but they're just a little bit odd shaped and I kind of like that for a scarecrow. So I'm double wrapping my hose around it because I don't want the green to show through. I want it to completely look brown because I want it to be 100% hidden, I guess, in the nose. <laughs> so I wrap it with a pipe cleaner and then cut the top off, but you want to leave enough that you can glue down. And this, this will be how I'm going to hold my nose on to the gnome body. Okay, now I'm going to use felt for the arms and I'm going to do this differently than I normally do as well. I usually use the, you know, curlers that you get from the Dollar Tree so you can have bendable arms. But in this case, it's a scarecrow. I want them to be stiff and sticking straight out. So this is where I'm going to use those other straws. You could actually use the bamboo sticks, really anything, but I just want it to be able to stand, be straight out. So I'm just going to since this is a no so I'm gluing my black felt together to make sleeves and I'll just let that dry and then once it's completely dry I can put the smaller balloon straw you could use the big straw too okay now I'm going to take a white tea towel I like to try to use all fabrics and everything that I can automatically get from the Dollar Tree so I'm going to take an old white tea towel and again I'm going to use those furniture markers just because that's what I had on hand anything really would work but I just want to kind of scuff it up I don't want it to look like like white pants out you know keeping track of the scare of the crows I just want it to be a little bit dingy and I'll put a little black in there and then I will cut this for my legs now I know this just <laughs> doesn't look like what a seamstress would do and is true it isn't basically what I'm doing is I'm cutting a spot for the legs that I'm going to glue and then I just want it to be able to turn into pants and if I have it so that it's straight up and down like a paper doll that's just not going to work I got to give it a little bit of space so that the legs can bend out I don't know if I'm making sense but basically the way that I've figured out how to do that is just to cut it almost looks like an M and then when I uh, glue this onto the gnome body I can glue everything around and the tip of the M I can glue up underneath and it looks like they're wearing pants I know it looks crazy it could be an M or maybe if you turn it upside down it's football uprights <laughs> I don't know but anyway that's what I'm gonna do and I had to have a little bit wider because this particular gnome I made him a little bit bigger amount. Sometimes I like to make them skinny and this time I just want to have a different look. Now I noticed when I got the body that the sticks weren't, there was one stick that slid a little bit. You don't want it to have any movement at all. So if there's any movement, you just hurry and glue on some more. Okay, now I'm going to get another tea towel that I have from my Dollar Tree Supply and I always use up every scrap known to man. <laughs> And this is the fabric that I used for the shoes, the tennis shoes that he's going to be wearing. So I'm just going to kind of match those, cut off a few pieces, and this is going to be for my patches on the gnome clothes. Okay, so I'm just cutting a few of those while I'm letting that other glue dry. Now I'll get my sleeves back out and put my uh, plastic straw that's very stiff up through there. And that will be able to hold the arms out in a position. And once I get the arms exactly the size that I want, I can trim off very easily the rest of the straw that's too long. Now, again, you want this to be very generous. You want a lot of glue on here. Realizing that the top of the arm where you're gluing this on is going to be hidden up underneath the hair and the hat. So you just be very generous with the glue so that the arm will hold its position when you are putting the rest of it together. Now, the one thing that I've found is it's a little bit tricky to wait for that glue to dry. And 
I hate just sitting there waiting for glue to dry and holding it. So sometimes I'll put a, a roll of tape underneath it to hold it in position until it's completely held together. I've tried putting elastic bands around it and they usually just pop because the hot glue will um, seep through anyway. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna give um, get some more glue that needs to dry and I'm gonna glue my nose onto my gnome and see how we have the hose sticking up in the pipe cleaners where I can glue that up. Now we're ready to start putting on the trousers and I, I just kind of keep that arm propped up until it's completely dry. It just seems like it takes forever when you have thick glue. Okay, see how my little trousers are coming up? I know it looks kind of like a diaper at the bottom, but once we glue it all together, it'll look just fine. I usually always put pockets on the back and um, the one thing that I would recommend is when you ever you're making gnomes, make sure you glue every surface down so that it's very hardy. <laughs> because at some point you're going to want to put this away somewhere and wait for it till next season and it you don't want it falling apart. And I don't know about you, but my granddaughters like to, I mean it is for decor only, but still they like to move it around and I just... Yeah, I just think it's a good idea to make sure that it's glued all the way down. Okay, so once I get the seam up the back glued on, I go ahead and seam between the legs and just keep on using my little spatula, my makeup spatula or my fingertip to push the glue into place so that I don't burn my hand. And that's, a, that's how easy it is to make trousers for our scarecrow. Now I'm going to use a piece of the twine for a belt because every scarecrow needs a twine belt of course and again we're just gluing everything. What did we do before we had hot glue? <laughs> I love hot glue. Anyway I'm going to give it a little bit of a twist in the front and as I'm working on this the arms are still drying but they are getting pretty close to ready to being able to do my thing up there as well. And now it's time for the patches. Now, the one thing that I will say about embellishments is I I have an idea of what I want, but then sometimes I just have to try it here, try it there and see what looks good. Now we're getting really close. Here's the one thing that I wish I would have done. When I was making my hat, I actually, oh, and you can glue, ultimately you can glue them in. They will hold together, but sometimes it's just a little bit higher on one side than the other, and it looks like it's leaning too much. So I'll just add some glue into the bottom of the shoe, and that will make up the difference and make it so it stands straight. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how I make my gnome signs. I use these uh, tags that are chalkboard tags that I pick up from the Dollar Tree. I print out my own sayings, and really there's so many fun sayings that you can do with no place like gnome, you're my gnome or whatever. <laughs> and then I just print them off on black and white, and the one thing that you do need to do with these little tags is you need to cut out a triangle shape, black 
and glue it on to cover up that hole of where the tag had a string to hold it so that it doesn't distract from your sign. And then you just glue that sign on and voila, you have a wonderful sign to go with your gnome. I love you no matter what. <laughs> okay, anyway, I was gonna say, um, the next thing is to use some sort of stick. It's, a lot of times I use my balloon straws here, but because I'm trying to keep everything in a more brown color, I'm actually using a bamboo stick to glue on my gnome sign. Okay, when you're looking in the background, you can see my hat there. And it's so funny, I got my whole gnome put together. And then in the night, I started thinking about the hat. And I thought, you know what? No scarecrow would ever have a hat like that. They need a rim, a brim. <laughs> so I glue this hat on here. And it's the next morning when I wake up and think, nope, I got to redo this. I need to give that hat a brim kind of like my sombrero from my sister's gnomes so i definitely would recommend doing the brim before gluing it to the head because adding the brim later uh well let's just say it was a little bit of more work and then also the suspenders should have done it before i put the hair on but these are the things that come to me in the middle of the night why don't you have suspenders why don't you have a brim i need buttons <laughs> That's how my mind works. Do any of you ever wake up in the night thinking about your crafts or your projects that you're working on? Comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. Sometimes I put things on the gnome and then I change my mind. I add hats, I add embellishments, I add little flowers, and then later on when I look at it, I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm always adjusting. crazy is when I woke up and realized I got to put a brim on this thing I really wanted to get it finished and the only trim or color that I had for a rope wasn't the exact same color so I went ahead with it I wanted to see I figured it might look okay then I didn't love that either <laughs> okay let me talk about my sunflower here this is from a pinwheel that I got in the spring and I knew that was going to be perfect for a scarecrow gnome so once it starts coming together, I was didn't really love the flower on the hat, and I didn't love the two-tone look from the hat. So I wrapped my little gnome up and spray-painted my hat brown so all the rope would match. Would have just been better to do the hat right to begin with and make sure all the rope matched. <laughs> I made myself some extra work, but ultimately I love how it turned out. Every once in a while, it seems like when I'm making a gnome, I just really can't quite get it how I want it. And I finally got this one figured out. Now I'm ready to duplicate it. What do you think? Wasn't that fun? I absolutely love making gnomes and scarecrow gnomes are so fun. So if you'd like to see more content like this, please like, share this out where you can and don't forget to subscribe and if you ring that bell to all, you'll be notified if I go live or anytime I put up new content. Actually, I have not done a live before, but I do plan on doing one coming soon. So you're going to want to subscribe so you know when that's coming up. I'll see you soon.